Welcome everyone to the HWBot World Tour 2016. I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and I'm being joined for this special stream by Ligoft, our overclocking expert. Hey Ligoft, how are you doing today? Day 3, still rocking and rolling. So it is actually say this is day three of this Computex here in Taipei, Taiwan. We have the day three of the HWBot World Tour as well. Uh, this is the biggest overclocking event that is actually organized here and for the first time at Computex directly on the trade show. Yeah, indeed, uh, like a really massive booth and uh, really happy to be here as well again in cooperation with Intel. And this year they're launching their brand new Broadwell E. And there's actually a lot of questions on the live chat already of the, the people uh, that want to know more about these new Broadwell E CPUs, the 10 core uh, CPUs based on the Broadwell architecture. Uh, this is the uh, the real name of the CPU they're all using today is the Intel Core i7-6950X. And this is from the Xtreme series. Uh, as you, Of course, here everything is extreme. They are doing extreme overclocking and we're doing an extreme awesome live as well. Yeah, I hope so that the viewers at home, uh, that they really like it. And really looking forward again to the 1v1 showdown. But in one hour and a half, something like that, Truthman, or is it a little bit later? Uh, that's going to be in about uh, one hour, yeah. One hour for okay. now. So cool. guys, uh, today the plan is we will be talking about everything that uh, we saw on the trade show today or about the overclockers that uh, have been achieving, about the hardware, etc. that was uh, launched here during Computex. And after that, we will have a little uh, you know, preparation for the face-off. The face-off is basically a one versus one format uh, they did the qualifier all this um, this morning actually the past three hours uh, they were in the qualifier the qualifier is now over we just uh, we just heard that the score were actually being reviewed by uh, Christian Ney the judge uh, this is an uh, overview about what you can actually have in terms of uh, of scores in this qualifier uh, what do you think League of yeah, really not unexpected to see Extreme Addict on top, uh, Ralph, uh, the guy that won uh, the previous first round day. But it's like you said, uh, the scores are still being moderated by the head admin of HW Bot, Mr. Christian Ney. And initially, initially it was Extreme Addict and then uh, world's number one, Dan Cop, in second spot. So something had been detected or, or maybe not correctly validated. And uh, yeah, he dropped the spot, so he's not competing in the 1v1 at the moment. Well, that is sad because Dan Cop is actually the number one overclocker in the world. Extreme Addict is then, uh, it used to be the, the biggest overclocker in competition last year. He had a very good record uh, on that. And Roth, that's going to be the second time we see him in a one versus one face off if the rankings stay exactly like this after the judge Christian Nick completely validate the ranking. Mm -hmm. Indeed, and it's like we said uh, on day one uh, that Rolf is one of those upcoming talents and yeah, he already did like a 1v1 uh, versus Hazan and it's his second try, so he's already again getting some cash. Maybe he can pick up one of those Broadwell E's before he goes home. That's going to be interesting for them to see. It. This CPU, actually the Broadwell E CPU we are talking, were actually launched just two days ago and uh, they are already overclocking it to the maximum as they can. There's some very decent score. Um, what was your first impression using this new Intel Core i7 CPU League of, because you were using one earlier today? Yeah, taking into considering my age, maybe uh, I'm a little bit slower than the young guys, but uh, indeed it's a very stable platform. In fact, and once you get like the hang of it, it it's it, you can really maintain the frequencies, which is not always uh, true on on other platforms where you could like at certain moment like maybe reach six gigahertz or six thousand megahertz, and like maybe after one or two crashes you lost like three or four hundred megahertz, and the CPU is like really rock steady. Once you got like it sort of maxed out, it yeah you can run it like for for hours easily. No problem. So pretty good technology. So there's two sides here at the HWBot World Tour 2016. There's the extreme overclocker on one side of the uh, of the of the stage, and there's the workshop as well. So League of what is the workshop based on? Well, the workshop, in fact, is uh, we, we're trying to get as many people hooked up to our let's say our passion, our hobby, and also to like them know, in fact, that overclocking is not s s that difficult. First of all, to start, and then also, if you take everything into consideration, what voltages you're doing, what temperatures, you monitor them, please. It's even bulletproof. Even I, all these setups, they're like really high end. The Intel Extreme CPUs, they're like unlocked. These things are meant to be overclocked. Why don't you do it? You get like extra performance for free. You get extra performance for free. And of course, the CPU is actually overclocking itself. 
by, yeah, by, no, by itself, like the, the, that's called the turbo mode or the turbo boost. And mm -hmm. uh, this is the, the 3.0 technology now in the new Intel CPUs. And uh, yeah, that's that's basically doing it by itself. So of course, uh, there's no risk at all if you do that at home. Uh, on, on the other side, actually, when you do that with extreme overclocking, like the guys you can see on the screen using liquid nitrogen and so on, well, this is where it's becoming tricky, right? Yeah, but even even then, uh, I'm, I must really say I only killed like in my entire career, if we can call it a career, I think two CPUs and one was even my fault. It was not even under the liquid nitrogen. So <laughs> that can happen. Yeah. And it's also like if, if you're like doing this extreme overclocking, you're going to temperatures of minus 196 degrees Celsius. And you notice that you get like condensation or, or water somewhere and, and the system starts to behave like shut down at, at the moment or just locking up at frequencies it was really stable before. You know something is going wrong. If you keep on insisting, pushing it, yeah, you could damage the hardware. But talking if you about, stop... Keep it about pushing it. You can you can always get these Keep Pushing It t-shirt on the Twitch store. And you can actually look below the stream on the Twitch.tv channel and you can get one of these t-shirts. Yesterday I had the gray one, today I have the blue one. Tomorrow I might have the red one. So these or get the gray one. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Which one did you take? Which color did you take for for the T-shirt? Yeah, my favorite color is black. Uh, uh, there was no pink one. Yeah. There was only one pink one, and Roman Hart took took that one straight away. So uh, no way of getting it. <laughs> for you guys to know, there's actually just on the other side of the camera in front of us. There's Roman the Bauer that is doing some weird faces. You should come over the other side of the of the live man. So here we go. This is the. That's uh... not true. I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, the the Bauer Roman. So, uh, well, do you like the event here? Of course. Of course. Perfect. Well, that's all we have to say. Thank you. Well, thank you can go now. <laughs> So as you see here, it's always fun. Like the HBLOT World Tour is actually uh, a gathering of overclockers, as you can see on the side of the screen. But this is although a way for us to explain what is overclocking. And for you guys on the live chat that just joined because you end up here on the front page of Twitch or because you were on the Intel channel on Twitch that is actually roasting this show today. Well, what is overclocking, Likoft? Well, overclocking, in fact, is just maximizing the performance of your setup. It Maybe simplest to compare, like uh, when, we, when I was young and pretty, we had like these little scooters and we could like um, include like other piston liners, uh, other exhaust, just to, to, to tweak, to get more performance, eh? to pick up your girlfriend a little bit faster than the others, or maybe that particular girl. So you, she, you had it her first, but that's what overclocking is all about. Like really pushing your hardware, no need to damage it. It's like, I really want to stress it because overclocking is usually associated with dead hardware. Not true. But you have to you have to know what you're doing. You really have to take it step by step. Go in small t steps. Check everything. Verify everything. Check stability. And it's like we said, most hardware has at least 10% of overclock out of the box. Yes, of course. That's either they overclock by themselves, and there's always a little more room for uh, yeah. for for things. Yeah, even even without in, in our case with, with electronic devices, we need to add a little bit more voltage, taking into consideration that it also generates a little bit more heat. But if you only go up with very small increments, there is no problem. Well, that's uh, interesting to uh, to find that out, uh, my dear Um So as we say, there is uh, if you just tune in, uh, this is. Uh, you know this uh, this this uh, event, and we explain to people what it, what it is. So, what is the system we're actually using uh, to demonstrate that to to the new people? Yeah, so we have the, the extreme boot and the messy boot that you're seeing displayed now on the screen because overclockers usually are not intended to be like tidy persons because we have like a lot of stuff going on, lots of thermal flask with the liquid nitrogen in. And of course, you have like to have like access to a lot of stuff, towels, even torches if you like, run into temperature problems. On the other side, we have the, the amateur overclocking boot and, and there is where you get like a 15 to 30 minute tutorial on how to overclock using uh, the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, which is uh, developed in association with Intel, of course. Otherwise, they wouldn't call it Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, together with HWBOT. And it's really like a, a nice stressing tool, gives you good information about how fast your CPU is running. And you can even compare it uh, online. So you have an idea of how fast is my setup compared to maybe a similar spec PC. So 30 minute tutorial by one of the local people here from uh, coolarl.com, I think. So they do it like in Mandarin. 
for the local people and afterwards we are also some of the overclockers as well as Tim from Overclocking TV will do it in English and afterwards you get playtime playtime and finally I hope that everybody remembers it what score they set they can come in on Saturday and do also a show off to win some great hardware I think I think one of the prizes is the Broadwell eCPU as well the high-end model that yeah. we're using yeah. uh, actually, on all the setups talking about what the, the amateur can win here uh, we actually have this so the amateur can win a PSU and a bench table so the uh, open bench table they can win uh, pretty much uh, that and on top of this there will be more stuff to be added uh, there was a reason for that it's because most of this uh, the the CPU were not launched officially when yeah. we did actually the uh, the the, the like the, 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 the display, but for you guys on the stream, you can win one of these CPU and one of these uh, PSU as well. So if you want to chip in and go on overclocking-tv.com forward slash raffle, you can win a SSD Zadak 511, the Mag Z Zada SATA 3 2.5 SSD. You can win all of one of the Intel Core i7 next generation CPU. This is actually the same one they are using here for the workshop, the Core i7 6950X. You can find you can also win one of the Seasonic Platinum PSU, the P1050 power supply, and you can one you can also win one of the unique bench table, the one of the early model of the BC1 open bench table. Uh, there is just a few model ex that exist here on uh, on uh, on Earth. This is not on the market. This is not available yet. This is an exclusive special edition just for the world tour here in Asia. Yeah, and it's like you said, it's, it's a prototype and it's still being developed and, and updated and modified each event that you guys are doing with, with HWBot in association with uh, Overclocking TV. So we're already on stop number four. We have one more left. So maybe after the last stop, it will be finalized. I don't know the design. Well, I, I can say in this... The, the version that is exists today had a lot of uh, evolution from the feedback we gathered from uh, the different part of the of the workshop and the and the world tour that we did. So there is actually a lot of modification already taken in account regarding the thumb screws and etc. We could go a little bit a little bit more in detail uh, in the, in the next few days in the next few hours if you guys want to actually you know uh, want to know more about that bench table. But yes, this will be on the market before the end of the year. I cannot say when and I cannot say the price because this is not defined yet. There was already a question about the amateurs, which, uh, which setup they were using. And indeed, the common components, in fact, are the processor, the video card, memory, SSD, power supply. Only thing that is different on these setups is the mainboard manufacturer. So we have the four big companies present here, ASRock, because one of their leading overclockers, Mr. Nixi, is uh, running around at the booth or walking around in the booth. We also have like uh, Gigabyte with their x99 soc champion uh, msi with uh, the new godlike carbon edition motherboard and finally asus also released a brand new motherboard motherboard sorry the rampage ev10 so the, apparently it's rog's 10th anniversary and they made like a special model today is asus day so uh two for, so can we is, handle this uh, yeah you have to handle it so you will be the uh... The old model. So the higher, 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 higher. So this is the setup that the amateur are using for uh, the uh, workshop. So they are uh, they are featuring uh, underneath this cooler from Thermaltake 360 all-in-one uh, water cooling. There is the Intel Core i7-6950X, the latest Broadwell eCPUs. Uh, we're using Zadak memory. Uh, so these memories are DDR4. Of course, there's a lot of RGB and lightning going on uh, on this one. And they're using, of course, different kind of motherboard. As you say, this one is the Rampage 5 um, Edition 10. Ten. So the yep. 10 anniversary. And of course, this is... Oh, can you turn it? Can you turn it to see the PSU and the SSD? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So this is the Zalak SSD. So one of the uh, new brand that was announced just here at Computex, and this is the Platinum PSU from uh, Seasonic as well. That if oh yeah, that's actually better like this. And they are using just a regular, um, just a regular graphic card. So this is the system the guys have been using for the workshop just to you no, know, you no know, discover what is overclocking and how you do it actually to you no. Know, Try out the new Broadway. I haven't tried it yet so much. I will uh, try to do that later on tonight after the show. 
Yeah, and indeed, it's already like a very good looking motherboard. And it's like you said, the, the main focus, I think, on this Computex is the RGB thing. It was already a little bit going into a hyper hype mode uh, last year, but now everything, SSDs, memory modules, they're LEDs everywhere. So you can fully adjust these things. They're like, like discotheques. <laughs> it's, it's like really insane. Not not up to my taste, but I'm a little bit older. And apparently all the, the younger people, they really, really, really fancy it. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. In fact, it's too bad that we can't show the motherboard board in action because you could really see it lit up and, and it's amazing in fact well, how many work they put into this this hardware talking about the action all the overclockers that were competing today uh, in the qualifier some of them are still around there overclocking do you want to uh, maybe we can uh, go around a little bit after to see what uh, what's going on with them but before that let's get back to the detail of this HWBot World Tour 2016 there was a lot of questions from you guys on the live chat let's uh, give a shout out to Speed Fastest SGT Bilco 88 Flanker CZ from Czech Republic Imagine Flow Speed Fastest oh, I already said it Mike TV and Safety Rod thank you guys for being in here let us know where you are tuning from which is your country you are and which is the forum you are actually representing if you want to you know give the hype for your your own people thank yeah. you to human snow for the follow as well uh, a new follower if you guys want to follow us don't forget to uh, subscribe to the to the twitch channel you get the information every time we will be actually doing and going live I think that's also one of the things we have to do when you want to enter the giveaway is that you have to follow Overclocking TV as well, Truthman. Yeah. So you cannot only share it on, on, on Facebook or whatever. You also have to follow Overclocking TV. Otherwise, sure. in case you win, you get left yeah, out. Yeah, we'll, we will send you a text like, please follow CTV because that's you no know, part of the game. Oh, you're still yeah. still that kind? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I can't, I can't officially tell if I'm that kind or not. Yeah. <laughs> Well, here we here we are, and here we go. We are here at the Azure Bot World Tour 2016. Um, ideal league of, let's go to um, the structure of the face-off quickly. So, as we say, we have the workshop for the uh, for the people to use this uh, motherboard and uh, this actually setup here today to learn on how to use Broadway. But on the other side, the extreme guys, the extreme guys are actually just you know, here enjoying their fun and so on. But they try to qualify for the face-off. And they were running out for uh, money as well. So how does that work here? So each day they had get like three different benchmarks. So in fact, what is a benchmark? It's a, it's a tool. Usually we use like these freeware tools from the internet. So everybody can try them out. You can find them as well at uh, the hwbot.org website uh, under the tab benchmarks, which is quite normal. You can download them and just check them. And in fact, hwbot is like a huge database of all these scores. You, there are also people benching on air, stock Intel coolers, water cooling single stage phase, dry eyes, and finally most of the, let's say the top players, they all use the liquid nitrogen. So pretty cool stuff, in fact. For the qualifying, in fact, so they had like this, started this for noon and just ended like, I don't know what, 20 minutes ago. So they had three hours to qualify and they had to do three of these particular benchmarks. Marks. Each day we introduce new benchmarks. So they each time have to adapt. And, and if you get the hang of it, you will learn that a benchmark not only is dependent on let's say what the raw processor frequencies you also need to tune and tweak the memory maybe sub settings maybe tweak something in the operating system to get like the maximum performance they had to get into the top three of the of the three stages in fact to get like a cash price money but only the top two go um, on a head-to-head -head showdown live on stage here for the audience of computex like uh, 20 minutes something like that one hour from now one hour okay Actually, one hour, 45 my bad. minutes 45. 45 minutes from then and then again they can choose one benchmark in fact it's not really choose they have a veto so the moderator mr christian christian Ney will draw one benchmark and they can draw a veto they can say okay i'm not liking this benchmark or oh, i know the guy has maybe a faster setup or better skills in that benchmark i'll veto this one this is almost like banning hero in uh, league of legends this is almost the same concept. Yeah. This is almost the same concept. You can just uh, say no, I don't want this benchmark. Except that we are doing this after. So this is the benchmark. Do you want it? Yes. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. You just use one. You just have one. Can be better. Can be worse after. You never know, right? Yeah. It usually is like uh, really tactical as well because everybody knows one another and everybody knows each other's strengths and and weaknesses. So sometimes you have to really be careful. Also thinking only about your own skills, but also about the skills of the other player. And maybe the thing is as well, they're using the same hardware, 
during the 1v1 as during the qualification. So they really know what their frequencies were, they know the frequencies of their competitor, so they really need to know how to deal with this veto thing. The 1v1 takes 30 minutes. For an overclocker that's really not a long time because you really have to cool down, get everything set and the thing that I forgot to mention is we have each day a different mainboard manuf manufacturer, let's say sponsoring the the Computex HWBOT World Tour. So today it's Aces Day. That's also why we've shown the new Rampage V10 motherboard. So I have to check Extreme Addict and Ralph both did the qualification as well on the Rampage 10. So they're like quite acquainted with the motherboard. Yesterday we had something else. We had Hazan from Indonesia and he was like on uh, Rampage board, so Aces board. And uh, yeah, he had to do it yesterday on the MSI board. So he had to adapt to the motherboard's design BIOS profiles, different voltage, different naming schemes. So really it's not that easy and you only have 30 minutes to get it all over and done with. That 30 minutes is super, super important. Everything can happen in this 30 minutes. You can have the best hardware ever, but if you actually don't um, don't plan well and don't practice right for these 30 minutes, everything can happen. You can uh, get a call bug. You can have to unmount your your system. You can have to wait for it to uh, to get back to boot. You can have boot issues. You can have so many things that can happen in that 30 minutes that it make it so interesting. The match for today will be at 4.30, but we will start the show just 30 minutes before and present each of the overclickers participating in this daily face-off here for day three at the HWBOT World Tour 2016. Yeah, and indeed, the, the, the shows show off that we're doing like at the, the World Tour are completely different. Like we said, 30 minutes, like we had to have these big overclocking events that took like hours. So the overclockers had more time, in fact. And now they, the, 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 the time stress is, is really... In, in yeah, ha having a certain impact on their performance because we've seen on day one that Hassan, normally a really renowned overclocker, but he working, was working on another motherboard brand than his favorite brand and he mixed up some voltages so he couldn't clock up that high. Yesterday we also heard, saw some guy not doing the right tweaks or forgetting about the tweaks, which might have cost him, like say, the ticket to go into the final on Saturday. So really this, the, 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 the time constraint is really putting some pressure on your shoulders. Right. This is this is you know I it's like a high level sport. This is a, overclocking like this is a sport and being prepared for this kind of it's like you cannot run a marathon without practicing for it. There's no way you yeah, can do an Ironman without practicing for it. So you have to be ready for this kind of special uh, format in one versus one. Yeah, true, and, and and we also have Dr. Reese from Africa. So he was the the number one from South Africa, and he also won that golden ticket in. in what, what's called Rage Lawn again in South Africa? It was the Rage. That was just Rage. Rage. Okay, the Rage Rage event in, in South Africa. And he said, okay, I'm coming to Computex. And normally, okay, I have my ticket already for Berlin, but I still want to compete with the guys. And Andrew will just do this, the same thing. Okay, these guys are doing this benchmark. I have a similar setup. And just practice. And, and that's... I, I won't say practice always makes perfect. We're all still human. We can forget things and, and stuff like that. But yeah... It, it's good that you prepare for C such events, that you are ready, that you know what, what you can do, that you know the CPU, that you know these memory models, because these are also unknown memory models. They're also brand new. So let's get some out of the system and actually show them on the stream. These module are from Zadak 511. This brand is actually brand new here. That's the first time people can see it. That's the first time people hear about Zadak 511. The reason is this is a new brand now. Uh, they're doing DDR4 and SSD. Uh, this is backed by a much bigger brand, uh, but the Zadak 511 branding name is actually completely new. Uh, as you say, a lot of uh, RGB stuff on it. I'm not a big fan of it either, but I have to say that there's some interesting concept in here, especially having the uh, SSD with the uh, with the top cover on it. Yeah, and, and true, and, and we already figured out which uh, memory I see. So the components, the chips are which are on the DIMM. So we already had like an idea how did we could tweak them or, or or tune them. But even though most of us use like another brand and. Yeah, it's always a discovery and exploration of what the hardware can do. And it's it's like with everything. You can buy 10 different CPUs or 10, 10 the same CPUs, but one can clock maybe, let's 
talk about air cooling, maybe up to 4,400. Another one can do 4,600. So there's always some... There's always a margin. For, on everything yeah. you do, there's always a margin that, you know, you never know that, uh, what can happen in, in there. Um, we actually do have here one of the uh, one of the SSD with us. That is the uh, Tizadak one. So they have one SSD, the regular one. So this is uh, just how it looks like here. So, so did as you said that this is the regular one, but so it's a pretty standard format, not uh, the one uh, with the, the RGB. We're seeing Nils from Seasonic really being anxious to get on the live stream. I think. Yeah. He get he gets his like his five minutes of fame today, <laughs> Truthman. <laughs> you will, you will. <laughs> so that's gonna be uh, actually in the next segment in the in a few minutes. So this uh, SSD is just a regular one, and uh, they have the uh, other SSD with the. Uh, uh, RGB light every uh, uh, no all around. Well, uh, that's uh, quite interesting to have uh, to have all that. Uh, League of T, you did the, you tried to do the qualifier this morning. You tried. No, Let, I let's did face not. It. No, no I you did, did not. not try. No, no, no. We we, uh, we were just uh, exploring the board yesterday, the ASRock board. I was benching on the Micro ATX version, and I submitted my scores uh, last night, and I saw that in a few benchmarks, I was like way below the other ones so i had similar processor frequencies but my score was really too low so i knew i had to dig into the bios and, and, and try to find from which setting is like really limiting my performance and we got that right today so uh, my scores are not being upped already to the to the bot but they are way better than what what i had yesterday so the old man still packs some punch <laughs> Interesting, and in, uh, we will actually switch to uh, our special guest for today, and that's uh, that will be Nils from Seasonic. So we'll just take a short break of five minutes. Uh, League of, I will let you go around with uh, the camera, the moving camera, to you know, show what's going on to the uh, to the overclockers and exchange with them uh, from time to time. And we also have like a microphone on that one. You will have the microphone on the uh, on the camera. Ah, the cookie I've just got to fill out. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, I hear you. Can you hear me well? Yes, I hear you well.
Welcome back, everyone. I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV, and I've been joined by Niels from Sisoni. Yes, nice to meet you here, and uh, glad to be part of the show today. And uh, as I see, it's yeah, you did it well. Very yeah, nice one here. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much for for being here with us, Niels. Uh, so you're working for Seasonic. You're one of the season partner of the SWBot World Tour. Um, yes. First question. So just present Seasonic to all the people that uh, are new to the live show, because okay. uh, we have been roasted by the Intel channel, and we might end up on the Twitch front page as well. So yeah. for all the new guys, what is Seasonic <laughs> and what are they doing? Uh, Seasonic is doing over 40 years only power supplies, so we are a completely specialist who is addicted and, uh, in design and manufacture of power supplies. And uh, yeah, what we do is uh, mostly um, we're doing high end. That means we bring new technologies to the market. We uh, bring some innovations to the market. We were first with a real fanless. Um, we had uh, now. This year, very proud to present the first titanium series uh, with 650 watt, which is a low voltage titanium, but it's more, uh, um, yeah, more difficult to reach this efficiency level with uh, the, um, yeah, the, the lower voltage. And yes, we're doing worldwide, so we we're doing a, a lot of uh, other product beside uh, the PC, PC business. We are manufacturer specialist. Uh, yeah, over 40 years. Well, that's uh, yeah. quite interesting, and uh, you, you do have a good, uh, you know, a good background as well in this industry because you have been personally in this industry for a long time and yeah. at Seasoning for a while as well. Um, a lot of people, actually, a lot of the overclocker knows you uh, already. Uh, you're actually sponsoring yeah. some of them. Yes. Um, okay. First of all, I I like to work with good guys. That's one of the thing. Um, I like networking and uh, yeah, I'm almost 12 years now in only the PSU business. Um, most of the overclockers, which I know and we supporting directly, we we know over years on a private base finally. And uh, so we, we're working very close uh, in case of uh, power supply, overclocking and also in private relationships. So that's, that's our style to do the business and have fun together beside the hard working on stage and benching. So you did actually took uh, one of the product with you today. Uh, can you present us a little bit uh, what this, uh, this yes. one is about? Yeah, um, I would say, okay. <laughs> you see it here. Uh, the name is uh, Prime Titanium. It's our uh, brand new series, uh, which we bring up at this show. We had the first teaser at CES show in Las Vegas in January, but the final product is now ready. Um, this um, PSU I, I presented already in the press conference a few days ago is uh, our new flagship. And uh, this means we bring up here all the technologies, all the knowledges and uh, our information about power supply design over many, many years. Uh, the most of our overclockers now the platinum series is quite good, and uh, we we reached with this series a lot of uh, yeah world records and stable benching. But here uh, is uh, a couple of uh, technology and specs. We we did it a little bit better. We have here for overclocking in a in the first way. We have uh, uh, need to provide very special uh, very stable voltages, and uh, these voltages. Tolerance inside this uh, setup is 0.5% on all. That means 3.35 and 12 volt are sorted like a walk. Um, so that means that even depending the load you put on it, there will always be the same voltage going out with exa these, uh, these ex exactly, dilemma. exactly. We it's not a dropping down and not a dropping high more than 0.5%, which yeah you need for a stable running and avoid the, yeah, you know what it means, the blue screen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. I know, I know, I know personally that you are a big fan of this blue screen thing, yeah. like the yelling the blue screen. I know that sometimes you're even on the live chat with us and you're uh, yelling yeah. blue screen behind your screen there. Yes, I, I follow you at Twitch. That's, that's one of the thing. Look, look, at, look at the colors, right? <laughs> yeah, brothers in crime. Um, okay. But. What we have with a prime um, unit again, it's it's the low ripple and noise. Okay, we are well known in the market that we have the lowest ripple and noise uh, technology inside our power supplies. But here we have a 20 millivolt, which is uh, yes, it's really like a, a very small peak for ripple and noise in in all load condition again. And 
this makes I think the user very happy. Uh, the hardware will be very stable and uh, you have not the chance to destroy or get any kind of issues with that. So, so, so you're basically trying to say that, okay, try to destroy this one and you will see uh, if you manage to do it. Yeah, you can use power supplies which destroy your um, your components easily, but uh, not for me. <laughs> that's, from that's not, yeah, that's not... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that good. was a good one. Yeah. Uh, so of course I can see it's uh, all modular. Yes. Okay. This this is a thing what what we're doing uh, for a long time. With, starting with the X series, we have a full modular setup, which makes uh, internally less cable setup. So we have l low, I think, three cables only to from the main PCB to this kind of uh, dotted PCB in the back. Um, and yeah, let's, let's make it easy for connect the cables what you need or uh, remove cables or remove a completely power supply and uh, we replace it with uh, another unit. So that's, that's quite, quite easy. Um, what we have finally is a 10 years warranty, which is, I think, uh, a trust in our product. Um, and the, the warranty with Seasonic is uh, worldwide. So if you have a problem, you can send an email from every place on earth and we will uh, fix it out. That's one of our yeah, promises to the customers and uh, to our users. Well, uh, thank you very much for uh, this you know, presentation of the new product. Yeah. Uh, let's talk more about uh, Seasonic. So what was the, the what was the show here at Computex for Seasonic? Yeah, as, as usual, it's for us uh, a very important show. It's our home-based uh, show and the Computex at all brings all our customers, media partner and friends together. So we, we meet uh, guys from all over the world here, and this makes us happy. We we mostly uh, invite them once, and they come. And uh, we are a local company, so we are not really like the, the big marketing guys who sing screaming and uh, showing. Uh, yeah. Oh, you will be screaming blue screen later on today. You know. Later, when I see it, uh, you will hear it. Yeah, right. Uh, Daniel, maybe you can do it. <laughs> no, sorry. Um, anyway, it's uh, it's for us. We are a good group of people. We we meet up with all guys from uh, from my uh, teams in uh, South America and US and uh, in Asia. So I'm coming from Europe. I'm a German guy, and uh, uh, I like to travel with twelve thousand kilometers to meet. Yeah. Always well, that, that's points, part of yeah. the, that's part of Computex as well. Like everyone loves to go to Computex. This is the stop so, of the year. See, yes, it's the first one in the year, but Computex is, to my personal opinion, the most important of the year. That's the last yeah. one, and that's exactly. the biggest one. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so actually, guys, you can win one of these PSU. Not exactly the one we show on the stream, but one of the PSU. If you go to the giveaway at overclocking-tv.com forward slash ruffle, you can win one of the P1050 uh, power supplies. So this one is the Platinum series. That's the same Platinum series they are using for the final. Right. It's, it's the 1050. The, the final here is using uh, the P760, uh, so a lawyer vantage unit, which is also possible to using for overclocking very well. And uh, this is the 1050 watt. So here you have much more performance to using yeah, more graphic cards or yeah, more performance for uh, very high overclocking demands. Yeah. And seven years warranty. So you will, um, yeah, if you destroy it, Send me an email. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there was a question on the lab chat from uh, Alot X. What will be the price of actually the Titanium Prime? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I forgot it to, to mention, but uh, this price point will be similar like the Platinum series in the market. Um, we will have slightly, I think, maybe 10 US dollar, 15 US dollar higher in the reseller price. Um, but the market, I think, will react like it is. So we, we place sooner or later completely our platinum series with it. So the price will be similar like a platinum now. Yeah. So it's not this high expensive unit, what everybody thinks technology has to be huge expensive. Uh, we, we work on a, on a really um, balance between technology and price, but uh, our technology at this time, I think it's an edge of technology and uh, with a very good price on the, in the market, yeah. So same price. <laughs> but but that, 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 that's the right way of saying an answer without giving it the right price. <laughs> that's actually quite a quite a good way for you to to say it. Um, yeah. Question from uh, question for you. Um, we we have like you know there's like a, a eighty plus bronze, it's plus gold, and there was platinum. Uh, the titanium. What's different from the previous ones? 
Uh, it's it's a higher efficiency what what you uh, have to reach inside the ten percent now and the twenty, fifty, and one hundred. So we add a higher demand. We have now ninety two percent what we have to reach uh, with twenty percent. It's 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 a really high high uh, technology thing, uh, and, and a really high demand on on a yeah on the components to get titanium level. AD plus has very strict uh, yeah specs for all. And the, the the persons, one person could be a very strange and very hard work to achieve on top. So titanium at the moment is the highest level what uh, H uh, what uh, 80 plus doc org uh, make, and uh, our unit uh, we achieve the titanium level in this um, easily. What special for the prime series is as well that we can achieve that with 650 watt, which is more. Um, yeah, more higher pressure to to the hardware and to the components. Yeah, that's okay. it. Well, that's uh, quite interesting. I saw that uh, Cisonic had a lot of stuff. Um, I know so that's more a personal question now. Uh, I know that you love to watch the the stream and so on. Uh, what is the what interests you the most when you watch overclocking? What do you want to see? Okay, first of all, I like to see how much uh, performance they, they get out of uh, single hardware units. So this, this uh, combination between when you're working on the edge of yeah stable and instable systems. Uh, also, I okay, I, I want to get a little bit uh, with these guys on shows and see how they do and how uh, uh, yeah they they filling the pot and it's very important to have a stable temperature inside the pot and also this this kind of technology when you when you addicted to technology you have to go to overclocking if you're addicted to cars maybe you have to go to the formula one and this is what i compare yeah we're sitting here in the formula one of hardware and uh, what can be better yeah and uh, actually, I like it. explaining with Formula One is the usually the way we do explain that to to newcomers. Like the benchmark is like the track, and uh, the computer is like the car, and the rules are like the limitation in Formula One. Yeah. So this is really uh, actually very similar to it. Yeah. Um, one of the last question for for this segment for you. Uh, how do you like the one versus one thing? Uh, part again. The the one versus one, the face off when you have like one overclocker facing the other one. Uh, ah, the, you mean you mean the battle, the one to one yeah. battle? I think it's it's. Better for for the for the for the show. It's better for for uh, to show which kind of guy can use it, use your the, the knowledge live. So uh, the stress is like this when you when you are, yeah, you have this kind of fever to go to the stage uh, and uh, maybe you make some faults that we don't make in your, yeah, private room. So the competition and the challenge for the overclocker at all is much more pressure. And to work under pressure, we all know that it's yeah, it's like you're sweating and you you have time limits, and uh, then you try to do the best, and maybe you do it in the wrong way. But maybe will work that the best will win at all life. Uh, when you're preparing yourself a lot, then you can do much much more. But to tell you again, all these guys are doing amazing job, even when they go into the final or they only going into the qualifying. I think they are also very sharp and very close to each other when I saw their results. So they're doing all well and um, we'll chat with somebody who maybe not on stage now for the final. <laughs> but I see a guy which I know very well on the final stage. So um, yeah, push a button, Dan Cobb. Go for it. <laughs> so that will be, uh, we are, will actually take a short break and uh, go back live with the face off of today featuring Dan Cup, the yeah. currently number one overclocker in the world. Is he, um, are you helping Dan Cup with actually uh, PSU today? Uh, is he still sponsored by Seasonic? Uh, he, he using a PSU, uh, PSU from Seasonic, but what we do, uh, it's a never, never story, a little story behind that. I know this guy over three years and I was sitting uh, in the the, the living room of his uh, boss, let's say his publishing boss. He's a, a captain of the Hardware Looks team, and I, I'm a friend to to the guy who's the owner. And we're drinking whiskey and gin. And uh, Daniel was chatting to me and said, "Hey, I need a PSU." And I said, "Hey, who are you?" Yes, I'm the captain of the Hardware Looks team. I said to him, "Okay, you, I will you get a PSU because I'm now drinking with your boss." And after that, this guy going straight up. And yeah, now you see, I think I was drunk enough to choose the right decision, <laughs> finally. 
<laughs> but no. that was a wide decision. Like he's now yeah. number one in the world, so they know Ex that. Uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. No, no, it's it's. I don't want to forget all my other partners in the world. Nacho, Jaime is sitting here. Uh, we have a, a lot of uh, partners in the world, and um, so he was one of the first. So he brings me more in the overclocking business and understand more what it is. So he teach me more than he, uh, yeah, he teach him. Um, so it's it's a it's a good thing. But, well, okay. In interesting story. Thank you for thank you yeah. for that. So we will uh, take a short break and come back for the face off between Dan Cup and Extreme Addict. Dan Cup, number one overclocker in the world, and Extreme Addict used to be the mo the most successful overclocker in competition in 2015. Can he defend his title? Dan Cup already have the experience of the one versus one from the Europe event at the HWBot World Tour we did at the Gamers Assembly in France. Uh, while Extreme Addict never passed by the quarterfinal. So uh, at this point, Dan Cup have more experience than Extreme Addict. But we'll have all that in the next segment. Thank okay. you, Niels, for being with us on the yeah. live show. Thank, Always thank a pleasure again. to have it. Thank you for the show and uh, being our sponsor. So we're looking forward to Berlin. So we will see us next time in Berlin. Okay. Ciao, <laughs> guys. Bye-bye.